Hey everybody, this is Joshua with the Tendonitis Expert. And this video is about why facet joint pain hurts so bad. There's different aches and pains and injury pains, but facet joint pain is kind of one of those special pains. So why might that be? Let's start with muscles. So you know you have big muscles on your back, on your spine, on your front, and on your sides. You also have muscles in between the vertebrae themselves in various places, and they pull in all sorts of different directions. So there's all the big muscles. They can compress this way when they're tight. They can also compress that way, depending on what they're doing. And this is a picture of your cervical spine, your neck, but there's also thoracic and lumbar, middle, little back, and low back, and you can have facet joint pain there also. What I want you to see here is that muscles can pull in any direction, essentially, and or they can create compression in any direction. So, for instance, with the spine here, you have all these bones stacked on top of each other. The joint capsule is part of where they meet. Specifically, it's where they meet and move. So as, you're, as you breathe and walk around and look over your shoulder, bend over and touch the floor, this is where that motion happens. There's two surfaces we need to think about. The first is the interior of the joint. So it's designed such that there's supposed to be some space in here, some synovial fluid, and then it slides back and forth. So as you move, it slides a little bit. You can see this, these are the surfaces here of the joint. So it's not like your shoulder socket, it's just more like cups or plates that kind of slide on each other a little bit. There's not a lot of movement in these joints. But they're supposed to be like this. But remember, there's muscles, and there's muscles, and they're contracting and compressing. And that can cause the joint to do this. That's a terrible picture. Let's do that one again. What I want to show there is, with compression, then the joint is pressed together. And so now it's, instead of sliding, it's more grinding. And that can, of course, can cause irritation and pain. The other thing that can happen with compression is when one side gets compressed and tight, the other side can be opened up too much. So then you have too much space. And that's a problem because notice here, you have the joint capsule, which is connective tissue, ligament essentially, that makes up the joint capsule, provides some protection and some stability. But that, that tissue there, when it's, it's not a problem when it, the joint is compressed because there's a lot of slack. But when it's overstretched, when it's open too far, then that connective tissue is essentially yanked on too much. Not only does that cause irritation, but you can get actual damage. This is a big one in whiplash where the joint opens too far too fast and you can actually get some rip in that joint capsule. And then you have scar tissue eventually lay down to try to heal that. But scar tissue is its own kind of problem. Anywho, my point here is the joint is supposed to have some space in it. When it doesn't have space in it, it's compressed and it grinds on each other when you move. And the opposite side gets opened and that overstretches the connective tissue. So those are the two surfaces we need to think about. The interior of the joint and the exterior, which technically is the joint capsule. Either of those two are part of the explanation of why you have facet joint pain. So again, remember I said these are supposed to slide. When you move, they're supposed to slide a little bit, some more than others. But again, we have the mu Ooh, let's get that out of there. Again, we have muscles essentially connected here and here, as well as the big ones. But imagine that this one is too tight. What is it going to do? It's going to rotate this vertebra around. So now this joint is subluxated, meaning it's not where it's supposed to be. That causes again two problems. Well, three problems. First is, it's not where it's supposed to be. So now when you move, it's thumping up against the interior of the joint. That's going to cause some bruising and some pain. But more so what happens in quote-unquote really bad facet joint pain is now the joint is not just compressed together with pressure. Now, because the mechanical forces of the bone rotated around, it's actually stuck. It ain't moving. It's like you put a truck on there. It ain't moving. So now the too tight side 
is stuck and there's constant, not just pressure, but mechanical force, so much so that these are locked together. And that's going to send a constant pain signal to the brain. Again, when it's rotated around, the opposite side is going to be open too far. So that connective tissue is overstretched, irritated, potential micro microtrauma, and potentially actual rip and tear. And that is going to send a constant pain signal to the brain. Now there's a lot that happens after that, as far as once that signal hits the brain. For instance, the brain, when it gets that signal, it tightens up even more to guard or protect. And what does that do? That puts more compression on there and more forced opening on there, which then sends more pain signal to the brain. And then the brain not only causes tightness, but causes inflammation. Inflammation, poorly spelled. Anywho, and inflammation releases chemicals which enhance your sensitivity to pain. So now everything in here that was already hurting is hurting even more because it sets your nerve receptors on edge. And that sends more pain signal to the brain. More pain signal to the brain. And that causes more tightness. And that causes more inflammation. That causes more tightness. That causes more inflammation. And tightness and inflammation cause pain. So the quick answer to why facet joint pain causes such bad pain is because your bones are forced onto each other in a highly mechanical pressure kind of way and and or it depends on what you've got going on but and or you have the ligament there being forced into a stretch and overstretch with potential damage of rip and tear that's why you can even get symptoms like nausea from this so people get mysterious nausea they might actually be having facet joint pain because when you poke a ligament you can't feel pain per se, but you still get a neurological signal and the brain interprets that as, for instance, nausea and severe pain. So moral of the story here, constant pain signal to the brain. Creates feedback loop of more pain. So a couple things you don't want to ever do when you have set joint pain is, for instance, when you get massage, They'll get in here and they'll massage all this. But you have to remember, and let's hope your massage therapist or physical therapist knows, that if you go yanking around on the neck, and this one is mechanically locked, and this one is mechanically forced open, when you go yanking around on the neck, even gently, you're forcing more pressure on that bone and you're forcing more overstretch on the joint capsule. One thing you definitely don't want to do is have the massage therapist get in there and massage the joint capsule. That will leave you with <laughs> way more pain. Been there, done that. If it's on the neck, big headache, literally. So if the facet joint hurts, don't let anybody tell you that the facet joint needs to get worked. It doesn't. The whole mechanism around this needs to get changed so that things can work better, so you can restore function, so you can restore space. But yanking around on it, and even worse, directly, deeply massaging that joint capsule is going to create more pain. If you'd like to find out more about facet joint pain, visit my website, tendonitisexpert.com, and find the appropriate page.